Good afternoon, enthusiasts, and it's November, so you know what they say, tis the season for politics. I already got a few decorations made up here. You see, I'm in a competition with my neighbor to see who can put up the most decorations this year. He's crazy. I can just smell the tension in the air. You know, this really makes you want to say something super controversial. I like Rougarou, guys. What? Okay, so you guys know what Cedar Point is, right? Just say yes or you'll make this awkward. It is the roller coaster capital of the world, period. I don't care what themeparktourist.com says. And listen, I feel pretty confident when I say that most roller coaster enthusiasts collectively enjoy and like most of the roller coasters at Cedar Point. But there are some exceptions. Yes, there are a few roller coasters at Cedar Point that are quite polarizing. While some roller coaster enthusiasts love these rides, other enthusiasts say they're stupid, dumb, stupid, and dumb. But by far the most polarizing roller coaster at this park is Magnum XL 200 with Ruguru coming in at a close second. Okay, in all seriousness, Ruguru is such a divisive roller coaster. People either hate this thing or they're made fun of because they actually like it. And I am the latter. I'm not saying this roller coaster is super amazing or anything. I just think it's quite good and a little bit underrated. And don't worry, I'll explain why I like this roller coaster in just a little bit. But for now, let's have a little history lesson, shall we? Okay, so it's the mid-1990s, and of course the only important thing that happened during this decade was the roller coaster wars. Amusement parks from around the world were trying to one-up each other with record-breaking roller coasters, and Cedar Point in particular was known for pushing the envelope. They opened the world's first hyper coaster in 1989, followed by the world's tallest and fastest wooden coaster in 1991, and finally they built Raptor, the world's tallest and fastest inverted roller coaster. Now, Raptor was important because it was the first ever B&M roller coaster that Cedar Fair had ordered. And because Raptor was such a big success, Cedar Point called B&M once again for their next record-breaking roller coaster. The thing was though, B&M's selection of roller coaster models was fairly limited back in the 1990s. I mean, they really only had two roller coaster models, the inverted roller coaster and the stand-up roller coaster. Both were extremely popular back in the 1990s. I mean, sure, B&M also had sit-down roller coasters, but I don't want to sit down on a roller coaster. That's lame. I want to stand up on a roller coaster. Even though I was already standing up for about two hours waiting in line for this thing. But I mean, seriously, the stand-up roller coaster was a huge fad back in the 1990s. So the world's tallest and fastest stand-up roller coaster coaster was inevitable for Cedar Point. In the fall of 1995, Cedar Point unveiled their next big roller coaster project, and it was the world's tallest and fastest stand-up roller coaster, surprise surprise. Now what's kind of interesting is that this roller coaster's name was originally supposed to be Banshee, but after this was revealed in a newspaper, the general public thought this name was way too dark for a roller coaster. If we crack open a dictionary, we can find that in Irish mythology, a banshee is a female spirit whose wailing warns of an impeding death in a house. So yeah, this name was quite controversial, so it was immediately changed to Mantis. Fun fact though, parts of Banshee's logo were repurposed for Pony Park's Steel Force in 1997, and in 2014, Kings Island named their B&M Invert Banshee. Anyways, back to Cedar Point, Mantis opened on May 11th of 1996 to critical and commercial success. At first, after the stand-up coaster fad kind of went away, Mantis became increasingly unpopular and disliked among pretty much everyone. One of the biggest reasons for this is the roller coaster's restraints. B&M stand-ups have bicycle seats to support riders' lower half of the body. These restraints were very easy to over-adjust, and well, <laughs> let's just say this would result in a very uncomfortable ride experience 
especially if you're a male. After years and years of people begging for Cedar Point to just get rid of Mantis, in 2014, Cedar Point eventually caved and decided to close Mantis for good. Mantis closed permanently on October 19th of 2014, and nobody cared. However, the truth was Mantis wasn't going away entirely. It was just being transformed into a B&M 4 list with a brand new color scheme and a new name to go with it. And this was pretty obvious. How? Well, Cedar Point was repainting this coaster while Mantis was still operating, so there is that. On May 9th, 2015, Rougarou was unleashed to the public. Introducing Rougarou, Cedar Point's first floorless coaster. Four mind-bending inversions flip you head over heels, then drop you 15 stories skimming the swamp below. Be one of the first to ride Rougarou. The newest addition to the coaster capital of the world. Save up to $16 on tickets at cedarpoint.com. Upon the opening of Rougarou, reception was a little bit mixed. You of course had some of the GP who thought this was 100% a brand spanking new roller coaster and totally didn't used to be Mantis, I swear. There were some roller coaster enthusiasts who thought, eh, it's alright, but nothing noteworthy. There were also some roller coaster enthusiasts who just straight up hated this thing. And I'm willing to bet that there's a small group of people who still think this should have stayed as Mantis. Overall though, since its opening, Rougarou has failed to impress. And then there's people like me. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the history of Rougarou. Now, like I said, this roller coaster is really divisive. Oh my gosh, that better not be the IRS again. You're a little late for Halloween there, bud. What? Yeah, you're dressed up as my arch nemesis of a neighbor. Very spooky. What? What? Okay, listen, that giant inflatable of Alan Shilkai, it's pronounced Shilky. Well, anyway, it's offensive to wooden coasters, and especially Mean Street. Yeah, 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 just uh, give me a sec, I'm talking about Rougarou. Ew, you like Rougarou? Yeah, so what? You like stinking Val Raven? Well, yeah, it's the best B&M coaster at Cedar Point. Rougarou-rio? <laughs> it's the worst, in my opinion. You can't even pronounce it right, and her opinion is trash. What do you mean? Your opinion is invalid. What makes you say that? Well, for one, you like wild things. What makes you say that? I don't got time for this. Hey, yeah, you better run. Anyways, I think it's time to review this roller coaster based off my personal experiences and opinions, so let's get right into it. First things first, the roller coaster's name. And oh boy, do I remember coming across this roller coaster when researching for Cedar Point for the first time. My first thought was, how am I supposed to pronounce that? Jeez Louise, Cedar Point, lay off of the O's and U's, please. Okay, just in case you're wondering how to pronounce this word, it's Rougarou. But yeah, it's a name, all right? Just one question. What the heck is a Rougarou? Well, apparently Rougarou is basically French for a werewolf, which I feel like werewolf is a good coaster name too, so... Why did they pick this? Rougarou does not sound scary, alright? If you said Rougarou to me, I would be like, is that a pasta or something? Alright, alright, enough with the name. Credit where credit is due. This logo is pretty sick. It kind of reminds me of Wild Things logo a little bit. And holy crap guys, we have to talk about this roller coaster's amazing color scheme. This is absolute eye candy. It is a beauty to look at. I'm going to say it, this is the best color scheme on any roller coaster at Cedar Point, and to top that, it's the best on any roller coaster I can think of right now. But those are just Rougarou's first impressions. How does this roller coaster actually ride? Well, let's talk about that right now. You come up into the station, take a seat, and pull down your over-the-shoulder restraints. When you're all clear and out of here, the floor drops down and you start to ascend the 145 foot tall lift hill. 
Then you reach the top, getting a great view of Cedar Point's midways. Then you turn right into the first drop. This drop really isn't that steep, but it's still pretty fun. And if you're in the back row, you get a teeny tiny little bit of floater air time, but it's definitely not much. If you're in the front row, you can fully experience this roller coaster's top speed of 60 miles per hour. And yes, you may notice there's a trim break on this first drop, but correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think this trim actually engages with the train, I think it's just there for safety reasons? I don't know, I could be wrong about that. I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comment section. Anyways, we have a pretty massive vertical loop coming next. Seriously, this loop is tall, and it's enjoyable for that reason alone. There's even some g-force pulling in and pulling out of this loop and overall i think it's better than the average vertical loop oh yeah now we're getting to my personal favorite part of the ride the dive loop by far the best inversion on the ride in my opinion why well it's the most intense inversion in my opinion it surprisingly pulled some pretty good g's and hey that was a pleasant surprise right there. It's just too bad that the other inversions didn't measure up to this one. Up next, we have a helix up high. And man, this element is just okay. You go through it kind of fast, but you don't really pull any Gs. So yeah, this helix is average, slightly below. Now we're coming up into the most unique inversion on this ride, the incline loop. And basically all this is is a vertical loop, but tilted to the left a little bit. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Honestly, not that much different from a regular vertical loop, but hey, points for being slightly different. This is my second favorite inversion on the ride. After that, we have a pretty whippy transition that leads to the rise into the mid-course brake run. And when you rise up into the mid-course brake run, it's pretty abrupt, so make sure to brace yourself for a possibility of head banging. You don't lose much speed as you come back down into, in my opinion, the worst inversion on the ride, and that is the corkscrew. Just not that good in my opinion. Also, it's kind of bumpy, so prepare yourself for some possible head banging. After that, we slowly turn around and come through a whippy-ish transition, and after that, this ride basically sucks for a little bit. It just kind of wanders around aimlessly, kind of like the roller coaster's drunk or something. But after all that, we come to the final break run, ending our ride on Rougarou. Alright, final thoughts. Well, Rougarou's first half is actually pretty good. It has some great inversions, but after the mid-course break run, this ride kind of falls apart a little bit, especially towards like the last 100 feet or so. It just really just meanders around. Also, I want to bring this up. I had people telling me that Rougarou was rough, and guys, I don't know if it's just me or anything, but Rougarou was not rough at all, like it was pretty smooth, except for maybe the corkscrew. And yes, it's not the smoothest b and I've been on, but hey guys, this wasn't really that rough, and I actually thought it was kind of smooth, so I don't know if it's just me or anything. Okay, now to answer this question, why do people hate Rougarou so much? Well, I think a big reason has to do with this roller coaster being at Cedar Point. I mean, Cedar Point is stacked with just some of the best roller coasters ever. So much so that it's a bit easier to see all the flaws in Rougarou. Whereas if it was at a smaller Cedar Fair Park, or any smaller park, it would have a much better reputation, I think. Now listen, I can totally see why Rougarou gets some hate. I mean, the second half really isn't that good. But honestly, I think Rougarou gets a little too much hate. Like, this roller coaster is still pretty good in my opinion. It's not super amazing, it's probably like, I don't know, like a C plus or B minus tier. But hey, it's something. And I think Cedar Point fanboys should be grateful for it because, I mean, you could be Valley Fair and have no B&M. Or Michigan's Adventure. Let's just say that I'll take Rougarou if you don't want it. So the final score is 6.8 out of 10. And that is a complete review of Rougarou. Now if you excuse me, I gotta put this sign up. My neighbor must have moved out, I guess. That's kind of sad. Like, don't get me wrong. He was very weird for like in Val Raven and Mean Streak, but Maybe I should treat him with more respect the way I want to be treated with more respect. And maybe I should have had a peaceful conversation with him and realized that we had more in common than we initially thought. 
And sure, we may disagree on a few things, but that doesn't mean we still can't be friends. And if we were just arguing about roller coasters, it's not that big of a deal, but we let ourselves get too extreme with it, and now he's gone. Man, everything would just be more pleasant if we just didn't attack each other with toxic arguments so much. Dude, that was deep. Really? Anything else you want to say? Yeah, that even is stupid, and anyone who oh thinks so is dumb. All right, now. Ready? Okay. <laughs> Guys, are we going or? <laughs> yeah. You're a little late for Halloween there, bud. <laughs> 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 Listen, that giant inflatable of Algon... Algon? <laughs>